So first off, we have Wendy, uh, Wendy Stewart-Smith from the Department of Nut Nutrition and Dietetics at the University of Sydney, and she's going to talk about pebble pad in dietetics placement. Um, so take it away, Wendy. Thank you. Um, firstly, thank you to Alison for the invite to speak, and for those of you who were on last time to the UK one, um, hopefully you can hear me this time. So we've, um, now, why is this not working? Return. It's not. Oh, there we go. We, the history for us is that um, we get accredited every up to five years. We've now got a five-year accreditation, so um, we have accountability for what we're doing, obviously, to our accrediting body. And basically, we needed to look at something else for uh, our placement for assessment. And I came across Pebble Pad through a colleague, and. and looked like the right thing, so that's kind of where we went. It was also a way of us flipping our assessment from um, supervisor-driven to student-driven, which has been a really big change. We've moved into a brand new building that's supposedly paperless. We have no storage for anything, and it gives us a paperless system. And the other thing that we find really useful is it gives real-time access by the, the key stakeholders, which is the students, the current supervisors, the past supervisors, and us at the university. So I started the trial with four students across two sites when I was back as a clinical educator in 2012, and I had a fair amount to do with them on placement, so it was a good way to do that. We did some evaluation in 2013, expanded it across all of northern Sydney in first semester, and then across um, all sites and all domains. Now, we have uh, 20 weeks of placement. And we have 10 weeks in at least two different uh, locations, a small hospital, big hospital, big hospital, outpatient clinic. Um, we also have six weeks in a community settings. That might be something like the Heart Foundation or Cancer Council or some sort of community setting. And they have four weeks in food service. So using Pebble Pad, in, previously we had three different assessment forms and nothing followed the student through. With Pebble Pad, each supervisor can see the evidence the students put in beforehand and what they're building on as they work towards the competencies. So last year we started training all of our first year students. We have a two-year master's course in our, um, I'll show you where it is. We have a 12 credit point subject called Medical Nutrition and within that we spend three or four hours a week uh, learning how to do the mechanics of being a dietitian, all the assessment and talking to people and documentation. So we introduced it there so that they got used to it, and then they have a 24 credit point subject, so it's basically all of one semester on placement um, in second year. So it just meant that they were up and running. Um, this year has been a bit of another interesting learning curve because we've gone to plus, but I'm hoping that we get it um, sorted and that next semester is a lot easier. Um, so just to show you what we do, our placement is really complicated. So all of those dark pink things are our community placements. All of the pale mauve ones are our clinical placements, our, our individual counselling, and all the blue ones are our food service. Some sites have food service and community. Some people have food service and um, individual counselling. Some places only take one student. So I've got over 100 sites over 100 pebble pad logins with a very complex matrix of, set, matrix of sets because each student goes to at least four placements as well. So it gets a bit messy. Um, so just so to point that out, this is last semester and I've just highlighted the Royal North Shore site. So they had four students at the beginning of the semester and four students later on. But let's take those four students at the beginning of the semester. They went to a bunch of different sites as they went through the semester. So it gets a bit messy and it's, I have just finished doing one of our two workspaces for next semester. Semester one students finished today, semester two, two students start on Monday, so we don't have a lot of turnaround. So who do you think? I think I've, I've covered that, so it's the staff, the site supervisors. Um, I think I've got 51 sites this semester. And there might be a couple of people at each site uh, that are supervisors. So we've got um, four workspaces set up. We've got a playground where they can just get in and muck around. We've got a year one um, site, which 
I'm hoping that as we move forward, will disappear, that it will be integrated and we will have assessment right across from the beginning of year one to the end of year two. Because the other thing that's driving this is that we have a brand new set of competencies coming out for dietitians very soon. So I've got to ditch all of my workbooks and start again. So that's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm putting in and hoping to get a grant to get our wonderful e-learning team, who have been amazingly supportive, to get those journals up and running. But currently we've got 144 elements that get assessed, so it's quite a, a big task for everybody. But yeah, if we can get it across the two years, we can have the students going in in um, year one and putting evidence in against key assessments and then putting a whole lot more in year two. So we've got our reflective journal. We've also got a second workspace that the year twos use. And that's for the form. So there's a whole bunch of like we, what we call bedside forms that they have to fill in. Overplacement makes no, no sense whatsoever to make them online because they're done with the patient at the time. So we just get the students to scan them and uh, upload them. And within that workspace, we've also got a, a global ref reflection. It's all very well that they can do various elements of the job of being a dietitian, but far more important at the end of the day, that they can do a global reflection on their strengths and weaknesses and set up goals and strategies for the future, and I'll show you them in a minute. One of the things that I'm very pleased with that we've done <coughs> is that the About page they land on has a whole bunch of stuff for clinical placement. I'm just going to very quickly run through a bunch of slides to show you what we put up there. <coughs> the students and the staff have found this really useful, so there's a hello, welcome. There's a before you get started thing and it's got links to all sorts of things like the transport websites. Um, it's got our placement manuals and sometimes students want to go overseas and practice next year or the year after. They need and they'll throw out their placement manuals and suddenly they need their placement manual. They'll be able to come back in and find those placement manuals there. Those paper forms I was talking to you about, um, they're all uploaded in case they lose them. And if everything goes wrong, we do have some paper assessment forms that they can access that are not normally used. We give them some support to places that they might find some good information. We remind them, and this information on this page is stuff that the supervisors would normally put in an email to the students. You've got to go fishing for it and update it and all the rest of it every time they have a student. So it, they can just direct them now to this workspace. We have tutorials they have to come back in for. We have tutorials that they can do while they're on placement. So the supervisors and the students both have access to those. Um, there's the dates. I've, I've updated this since I've got the dates for this semester, the second semester now in there. Um, they have to, when they come in, give us a, a five minute handout so all the details are there. They have to do a case study. We've got all of that there. We've got information on their milestones and competencies and links to um, support information for all of that. And then every, well not every site, every site that's given me the information about their site has a page. And that's got all the stuff like a map of where the hospital is or the site is and how to get there and where to meet and what to bring and all those sorts of things which again saves an awful lot of time on the day. And even little things like my office when I was at North Shore was upstairs in that old building and there's a bus stop outside and the number of students who said to me having seen that, oh, at least if you were running late, I knew you. I was in the right spot because I, I could see by the picture I was there, which was really helpful on first day just to get their nerves a little bit calmer because they're always a little bit stressed. And with our rural sites, sometimes they aren't as, um, may not look on paper as, as much fun as some of the others. And Lithgow is one of those places that sometimes we go, oh, that's a bit of a hole on the other side of the mountains. We've added in lots of links for that and nice photos. Um, that was Lithgow on a good day up the top and the other ones are photos from my in-laws farm that look back towards Lithgow to kind of make it look a bit more appealing with links of things that they can do on the weekend. So they found that really useful as well and a photo of the hospital with the um, Three Tree Hill in the background there. So that's kind of a, I, I don't normally rush through slides so quickly but I just wanted to show you what we've done that we have found particularly useful and so have the students. So to get to how we're actually using it, we're using workbooks. We have, it's actually now 28 competencies they have to go through and we're using a two-tiered um, progress and assessment. 
So I've got level one and level two. So when I get on, I can see everything that's there. I can see the feedback that may have been given with that page if you're not using this at the moment. Um, the red just, we use it to designate that there's either been no opportunity to demonstrate something at that site or there's been poor progress over the time. And that normally comes out if there's a comment. The yellow is what we call progressing towards. It means they haven't reached competency consistently, but they're on their way. And the green ones mean that they have made it to entry level and that we're happy that they're consistently performing and the supervisor's happy that you can put them in any situation and they will be fine as a, as a new grad. So that's just bringing that in a little bit more closely. But every supervisor that sees the student has to put it in there. You only see two of the assessments, but there, there should be four in there theoretically by the end of their placement. And they can reach competency at any particular time during placement. We used to only do it right at the end of their placement, but now they've got 20 weeks. Some of these competencies go over all three domains, and some of them are specific to one or other domain. Now, if they go over just one domain, obviously we want them to be competent by the end of that placement. But if they go over four, sometimes the supervisor is a bit reluctant to sign off early. And, and for the most part, the students really aren't up to that point anyway in the early days. But it's encouraging, encouraging for them to see that some things do get signed off earlier on. So when we get inside our documents, we have, say, 28 of these documents. And we have the wording in the document exactly as our, in our professional standards. Uh, most of these competencies will have more than one element to it, so there's a number of pages within it. And what the students have to do is simply put in the date and their evidence. If it's in their first placement, or if they're not feeling that they're at entry level yet, it's just what they're doing at a consistent level, a good example of where they're at. And if they haven't done it earlier, at, at the last week of that placement site. In the second one, we want to see that they are up to, up to scratch. This is a, an individual counselling one, so there's only two pieces of evidence in there. So that's the second element coming up. And then we use the tick on the sidebar to do the, um, the sign-off. We don't encourage the supervisors to give written feedback under most circumstances. And the, one of the reasons is the time factor. Another one, especially with so many elements they've got to look at, another one is that we've lost the ability now to do the private comments and everything is open for all supervisors to see. And that's something that we really miss from the classic. That now if, if there has to be something that's a little bit more private, we actually have to go into email, send an email, and then copy in everybody that's involved in it. And it's just not linked to this, which is a bit pesky, but it doesn't happen very often. But it would be a nice thing to have back. Um, so we get them to do their approvals. We encourage them to talk to their students rather than um, them putting a lot in at this point. But there is another spot that we do ask them to put in a, just a little bit of um, feedback. So. Over the assessment, as you can see, there will be up to four sign-offs. Hopefully the last one is a, a green one at level two. Um, everything's date stamped. It's all clear there. Um, some of the supervisors made some mistakes early on and they had, that had to figure out how to recall. Um, very occasionally the students are using the reply to a feedback, so it's there, which is kind of nice too, but it doesn't get used very often. So that's our, our competency workbook. So they're working through that over the, the 20 weeks. Our second gateway, as I said, was more a forms and a reflection on placement workbook. So we've got five documents in this workspace. And in here, each of the reflection on placement documents are the same. There's an instruction page. And I'll come back to this once completed, um, select the button to confirm. I've changed the wording for this placement. but I'll come back to that in a minute. On the second page is where they fill in. Now this is fairly comprehensive. I've changed names to um, protect the innocent, but this is actually what a student put in. You probably can't read it because it's too small. But it's a, a fa fairly good feedback. What did you as a student do well? What areas need improvement? What are your goals? What are your strategies? 
And so the plan is that this is done and that then the supervisor comes back, which I think is this one, yep, the supervisor then uses the same side tick, comes back and will give some feedback. And because this is a global feedback and the students are going to go to a, a next placement, this is one of the big things that the supervisors will use at the next placement to help to get goals and strategies in place based on the feedback that's been given and the discussion between the student and the supervisor. We're having a little bit of difficulty getting the, the supervisors and I think partly because it's the first semester of the new format that we're using, we're having a bit of difficulty getting them to stay on board and actually get this done in a timely manner. But I'm getting more and more supervisors whinging that somebody hasn't done it before them so I'm hoping that that will spark them to actually make sure that they get this done by the end of placement so the next supervisor has it. And again the students can make a reply to it. We have the forms document as well, so that's the fifth document on this page. Oh, and what I didn't say about those, those last ones, the reflections, the final one is really useful for the student for just having that final global feedback too for when they do their job applications the next year. And one of the things that both supervisors and students have said is that having those global feedback sheets is really useful for the supervisors that might be you know, 12, 18 months later that they are asked to do a referee check and they can use that global one as a really good thing to go back to and just check the finer points of the, the, the strengths and weaknesses of the student for that. And for the students they found that that and even the individual bits that they've put in in the competency workbooks are really useful for when they're putting together their um, job applications. And also once they then go out as dietitians, one of the first things in our CPD cycle talks about reflect on your own practice. So it really is changing the way that they think about their reflective practice and that they are much more, even the, the ones who aren't good reflectors, and that's obviously a, a downside of, of all of this. The ones all of them are finding that it helps them when they go out for their uh, mentoring year to reflect on their, their practice a little bit better. So this is the forms one. So the way we've got this one set up is they just have to put the date and where they were into the, the checklist there. So they've got a, a bunch of them and then they just upload and I've given them instructions. I've put together a 20 page manual on how to and what to this semester, so hopefully it'll, it'll be fairly straightforward, but most of them figured out fairly easily. And when they've got all of them uploaded, we just ask them to make it green that they've got them all there. So anecdotal feedback. Um, we're about to start an evaluation, by the way, so I'll be able to give a bit more uh, probably at the end of the year. Hard, clunky and cumbersome, mostly that was around the, um, the classic. It, it certainly is working a lot faster. Um, on the New South Wales Health website with the new system which is good. A lot of hospital practitioners in particular are very, very technology fatigued at the moment. There's been a lot of electronic things coming into the hospitals and they are really tired so it's just one more thing that they've had to learn. As I said, the, the positives there um, from the students about um, writing job applications and the supervisors. The other thing that that I didn't mention that, that was a positive and, and I haven't put here either that the real time is good but the other thing is that and I noticed this as well when I had um, students who maybe aren't very articulate verbally or who need time to process what's going on and you know going to see a patient with them you come out and go okay what did you do well what do you think you need to work on how are we going to do it they kind of look at you blankly and go oh, I don't know that was awful, you know, they always say it's awful. Um, or those ones who really aren't very good at talking about themselves and what they've been doing, when they get to write it down, they do a much better job. And I have had a number of students who are not particularly good at articulating how they went and their thoughts around that to me at the time who've come back with amazing insights and I've been able to work with them far better because they've given me the stuff and I've been able to then bring it back up in discussion with them and, and it's given us that springboard to talk. So that's another thing that's been really good. So what have we learned? Be patient. 
um, and develop a really good relationship with your e-learning team. And now even if I have Blackboard problems, I tend to give them a call and rather than an email and I tend to get it sorted out. So I have found that relationship a very positive one and it's been a very mutually positive one. I think they have got a lot out of it as well. Um, we did introduce student-led assessment and the new technology all at one time and that was really problematic because supervisors who've been doing the old paper system where they just write things out they were supposed to write, but a lot of them just did tick, tick, tick. It used to take me four hours to do it for a student. Um, I'm sure a lot of them took less and now complaining it takes a lot of time. Um, and then they're blaming it all on PebblePad. Now when it was running slowly I can understand that, but I think we're now actually making them do a much more appropriate assessment and, and have a much better dialogue with their students and they're not recognising that for what it is and I think they're some of them are resenting it a little bit, but I think we'll get past that as our younger supervisors start to move through. Train, 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 all the time you've got to keep training, be patient, be available for your supervisors. Um, the purpose-built manual has been helpful, as I said, I've just done one for the students, it's 20 pages long, really helpful. And, and we've got an appendix on that that's got examples of really good entries and examples of ones that weren't so good from a whole range of the competencies. And with the ones that weren't so good, we've provided why it wasn't so good and we've rewritten it for them so they can have a really good idea what sorts of things to write. The admin is time consuming. I've basically spent most of the last week when I should have been doing other things, um, getting things up and running for next semester. And, I, and part of it is that the links did, some of the links broke when we moved from classic to plus and I hadn't realised it. I've had to redesign some, some of the workbooks um, and as I said doing that matrix of um, placement sets takes a long, long time. Um, the resource development takes a while but then it tends to run itself until they change the competencies on you. Um, the follow-up questions from the training I got stacks. I was spending hours a week just dealing with students and supervisors at the beginning of the semester. And I'm hoping that as we integrate that further across the curriculum back at university and as our supervisors get more clued up and that the, we get a stabilisation of the platform and not too many changes coming up, that that will decrease over time. Um, and then the other thing I've had to do of course is move students between sets as the placements change on the run because things fall down but that's just life. And I think, oh no, where to now? So with the review, um, yeah, we're looking at those new competencies and getting that up and running. We're going to do the um, evaluation along the way. We're applying for a teaching grant. So hopefully we'll have some more news at the end of the year. And that's us. Hello. Fantastic. Hello. Yeah. 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 Hey, thanks a million. Um, Wendy, yeah, fantastic. Wow, we I can uh, immediately appreciate the amount of work and as you said, the time-consuming nature of it. And so on, congratulations. I think uh, everybody was uh, suitably impressed, certainly by the About Me page. I have never seen one as impressive, so uh, well done. That in itself must have taken you mountains of time. So uh, that's really, really good. Um, yeah, uh, in terms of questions, somebody wanted to know if the About Me page, you make it available to the clinical staff as well so that they're well informed in terms of the students, um, where, they're, where they're placed when they come on clinical placement and so on and what they have to achieve in terms of uh, goals and so on. Yeah, we do that. That same about page is available to both the students and the supervisors, so they will both land on that when they log in. Uh, I figured that was the best way to make sure we had clear communication about what's happening, and the supervisors can then refer the students back to what's on that about page. The one of the downsides is because I own that document. Well, actually, we set up a, a, a sort of a ghost login so that. Um, if something happens to me, somebody else can log in rather than using my uni key to log in. So mm. we've set it all up under this um, placement login. 
Um, so I'm, I or one of the other lecturers here are the only ones who can change what's on the About page because it's part of a, it's actually a web folio, it's not even a workbook. And because mm. we, we had it already set up and it was working well and we just kept it. So yeah, yeah. they all have access to it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, a question I was going to ask you, Wendy, was you set up the playground and whatnot for the for the guys to muck about in. Do you, does it get many hits? Do you find that there's the people who seriously use it to get themselves up to speed in terms of um, using the platform? No, look, we don't. But then when we had supervisor workshops, we have to run a couple of workshops a year for our supervisors. It's part of our accreditation. And one of those is always a new supervisor workshop. And so when we have a new supervisor workshop, we can let them loose on the playground and they can publish a, a document or they can add some evidence and, and have a look and, and a play at what it's like without feeling that they are going to do um, damage to something. So we, it, even though it doesn't get a lot of hits in terms of external use once they're away from the uni, um, but yeah, they can they can use it while they're here, so it, it's still useful to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, well, fantastic! Like, congratulations. I mean, it's 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 incredible, and I think that what it's, the, the the map you showed us of you guys' placements, like the sets and so on, just must be like a, a, just a, a warren to follow. How, do you manage that in some particular manner? To use CSV and transferred energy, just to add an on the run. Well, on on our first one, and I've just seen that Mark Henderson has has joined us. Hi, Mark. Um, yeah, on our first semester, we we did the CSV files, but it is or we tried to. I I've just been individually putting them in from that map this time, mm -hmm. because as I said, many of the sites only take one student, and it just gets too messy. So it, it took me a few hours and I think mm -hmm. even last time we did it we had Mark and Joe and myself working on it in the lab in e-learning and it probably took us an hour and a half to do it between three of us and we were just going for it for a while. So it does take a lot of time to get that up and then mm -hmm. of course there is on the run changes to be made as well. And then that relies on communication that I know the changes and I've had a few calls from supervisors going, I can't see my students. So then I have to pop in and just check what's going on. And of course there's always the possibility of a mistake. So just before I got online I was in the middle of writing an email to all of our supervisors because we are um, going, I've just gone live this morning with one of the workspaces and the email will be check what's going on, check you can see your students next week once they've published something and let me know if you can't. And I, once I leave here I'm going downstairs to catch up with our students who are starting placement on Monday and they will, um, yeah, they, will, they will be retrained, I'll go through what they need to do and tell them about the new manual and make sure that they have published at least something before they leave this afternoon mm -hmm. um, if they've got a computer with them so that they know what they're doing as well. Yeah, very good. A uh, question just came in from Jennifer Rowley. Like, how do you motivate your supervisors to engage in the process? Because they're obviously crucial to the to the students' uh, requirements. They don't well. have an option. They don't have they, an option. They need to sign. They have to sign off on these students. It's part of accreditation, and it's part of the deal. If they take our students, they have to do it. When we were on Classic, I did have one supervisor who point blank refused to use it. And in doing so, um, the student had to put all of the evidence in. He did the sign off on paper um, and, and the student printed everything off and one of the other lecturers had to go in and just tick everything off, which was a stupid waste of time, but that's life. But I yep. think now we've got everybody on board. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think your your point was pertinent in terms of uh, at the end, you, you just got to kind of keep going sometimes, don't you? There is a question that did come in, uh, if you care to answer or not. Um, are supervisors paid to supervise or are they, what is the, because that would obviously put you in a, in a different standing in terms of making uh, Yes, those... I just saw Anita's uh, question. Um, no, no they're not. Um, I know in Queensland they are and in New South Wales we are not at paying our supervisors yet, which is good. 
um, mm. and even so, we still get them to to do what we need yeah. them to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, look, I think that's about it. Just a massive congratulations. Like that's an enormous amount of work, and I think it's very um, easy for everybody to see how much you've put into it and so on. And I want to comment just in terms of creating the manuals and so on for the supervisors. What I we put a lot of time into that at the outset, creating like the same twenty-page manuals and so on, and the paint and screenshots, and it was a bit so painful. And we've started to use. Camtasia screen recording and like I, I have just found it really incredible you can just embed it on the page where the student requires to, to do their work and we found it quite good and we got good feedback from it just uh, have you thought about that at all? Fantastic no I haven't used that platform what I had intended to do and Mark and I've had some chat and, and now Mark's here I can say thank you for all his hard work because it has been a team effort um, yeah, I I'm, I'm have it in my to-do list to do a, um, a video with screenshots or not even screenshots, just to work them through the, um, the actual process with just sharing my screen to do it mm -hmm. um, so that those ones who need it can. Yep. I yep. have thought maybe I need to chat with you later and uh, find out what you yep. do. Yeah, so we found it very worthwhile. Uh, fantastic. Right, oh, so uh, I'm going to hand over to um, our next presenter, and um, it's Anita Hamilton um, from, uh, of course, the University of the Sunshine Coast from Occupational Therapy. So, um, yeah, over to you, Anita, except anybody has anything pressing to say? Too late. Aha. Uh -huh. Thanks for that. Um, thanks for inviting me, Alison, and also John and Terry. And thank you, Wendy. That was fantastic. I learned tons from you. So can, I hope everyone can see my um, screen OK. And, and I'm just Anita, Anita, at the yeah. moment we can see your, your slide and the oh, second middle slide. You might want to change yeah, it so we're only we seeing the one. Around. Yeah. I can stop sharing and change which screen it is. Yeah, yeah, I chose the wrong screen. Okay. Try that again. Thank you. That should be better. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I love two screens. <laughs> but <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, um, yeah, Wendy, we're going to have to talk because I think you've got information for me for this next step. So, and you'll you'll see it. So, um, anyway, thanks everyone. And um, so, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing in occupational therapy here at University of the Sunshine Coast. Um, and um, I'm going to, I mean, I'm tainting it with my own um, my own interests, which is pretty much in digital literacy in, um, in our students. So um, ePortfolios just fits into this whole area of these two key competencies our students need to have in, in the 21st century, which is information literacy and digital literacy. And so um, this is pretty much what I did my PhD on over the last five years and just submitted uh, recently. And um, Basically, what I'm very interested in is that our students um, have digital literacy skills embedded into the curriculum so that when they emerge as practitioners, they really don't um, think twice about using technology for um, information management and knowledge sharing. So um, information literacy is a really big area and if you've looked, you know, if you're in this area, you, you know that already. So the, this is the um, a synthesized version of um, information literacy, but um, seeking, locating, evaluating, selecting, and organizing information, and involving using information to analyze, synthesize, create new knowledge, communicate, make decisions, and problem solve. And as such, information literacy is often considered an essential component of critical thinking, independent learning, and lifelong learning. And those three things, critical thinking, independent learning, and lifelong learning, are three things that really are highlighted in ePortfolios or portfolio use. So um, this whole area of information literacy and ePortfolio use go hand in hand. 
So digital literacy is is the, the ability to use digital technologies to perform tasks associated with information literacy. And um, I, I find that um, explaining to my students, so for example, last week when they had to upload their fieldwork reflection journal to Pebble and they got an extra five marks if they submitted it as a PDF in the right place, um, you know, 66 out of 95 students got it right. And um, it's quite interesting because I, I basically put an announcement up to say, okay, so those of you who got it right, you know, you're showing great digital literacy skills here and these are, this is the way that you're going to be applying for jobs and applying for funding in the future for your clients. So these are the skills you need to work on. It's not just the other skills that you're doing in your um, lectures, tutorials, workshops and field work. So hopefully they're going to get this message from me. They will. <laughs> so <laughs> Priscilla knows it too. She'll probably be sitting there laughing. Um, so you, I'm sure you're all pretty aware of the history of portfolios. Um, so they originated as a collection of paper-based resources to represent one's knowledge and skills. And they provided evidence of skill attainment, maintenance of competence for practice and plans for professional growth. So um, this is this is exactly what we're aiming our students to be able to produce by the time they hit fourth year. But of course, nowadays we want it to be in, in electric, uh, electric, I like that, electronic format. Electric would be interesting. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you've met um, Christine Slade and Keith Murphy, but they were um, both employed at, well, one of the roles for Keith, but. Christine was specifically employed at CSALT to look into which e-portfolio um, program or tool we should use here at USC. And so they went and um, did uh, about, I'm not sure, I think it might have been a whole year of research into different tools and examined them all and compared them. And they've, they've published that paper uh, with Kylie Reedman, the head of um, our teaching and learning group, CSALT, which is a great name, of course. Um, and so um, I've got references at the end if anyone wants to look those up, but they, they talked about the process. And um, so OT was one of the programs that was included in the launch, just because I'm one of those people who's very persistent at getting what I want. But my discipline lead said, we have an existing paper-based portfolio system and we're sick of carrying these folders around. We need to move. And so uh, with a, with a full support of my discipline lead, I kind of just kept hounding them and saying, pick us, pick us. So they did choose us to be um, part of the, the launching group and midwifery was the other group. So we had a lot of fun. Um, so we took a slow explore start, which literally means that we just started with one year level at a time. And it's a I think it was a good decision at the time because there was a lot of change of staff, um, a lot of, you know, em we're quite a young program, we're only seven years old and so, and a lot of us have come from different places. I'd come from working in Canada for five years, um, other people were from other places around the world or other places around Australia. So we, we were forming a new team again, so just taking a slow approach was a good idea. But then we noticed the students were starting to get agitated that some of them were saying, well, we're missing out. And so we decided to actually just go across all four years from this year on. Um, so we started, good question, John, we started with year one. So we went upwards and we were aiming to take them to year four with everything in place and tracked um, so that they would be ready for a fourth year sort of launch into the profession, um, having tracked all of their learning. So that that was the, the idea and also because I was involved in year one, it was easier that it was a course that I was taking. And um, with um, the fourth years, they were still expected to move to a digital portfolio, but we decided that um, they could choose how they did that and having been a person who had a WordPress portfolio, I just literally showed them that and a lot of them chose, um, uh, firstly they said, oh, they chose WordPress and others chose Wix and other things like that. So, but they were, they didn't have anything stored 
or ready to put into an e-portfolio, they had to create it from scratch, whereas the people coming first year, second year, third year, marching through the program were gathering all of their assets and they will, they'll have them ready to put into um, Pebble. So last year, oh, into their final portfolio I mean, so last year um, I did an honours research project and I really apologise for the quality of this picture and I don't know why there's some weird graphics up there. That is so weird. But anyway, what I'm showing you this for is the colours themselves are indicative of the phases that the students go through and this emerged from my students' um, research last year, um, Shelley Hume did a Delphi study and she asked occupational therapists um, who are in practice and or a hu huge range of people what needs to be in a portfolio for entry to practice. So she was interested in this green part over here, so CV, what's in the e-portfolio and um, and then you know what, what else has to be there. And we as a, a group of staff, we're more interested in well, what's down here, oops sorry, let's go back, um, down this end in the red area, what do we need to include in the curriculum so that the students can demonstrate all of this when they get out to practice. So um, we got a learning and teaching grant this year to extend what we were doing um, and mainly because it's just so hard to add this to your day-to-day -day job and do a good job of it as no doubt all of you know. And um, so we're, we're really looking at um, what's in our curriculum, how do we map it and um, yes, yeah, starting year one and moving up. And um, with the with the grant, of course, you know you must have research agenda. So um, I, was, I was actually just going to go through the research questions with you just to tell you like how it's mapping at the moment. So the first one was how do the Australian competencies um, for occupational therapy um, how are they mapped in the curriculum at USC? Um, and then how can the OT curriculum be designed and delivered to make the AXOT guidelines more identifiable to students? And then the third question is how can using Pebble assist research question two? Then we've got um, how can the ePortfolio framework, the, the she Shelley's work, Shelley Hume's work, transit the, that framework which I showed you, the beautiful picture, um, and be used to inform the development of what I'm now calling T portfolios and me portfolios because Alison has called them that and I really like that idea of that tracking your learning and then demonstrating your learning and who you are and putting yourself out to the world. And then research question five is what do students anticipate about an e-portfolio when they first hear about it in first semester and we do Oh, it was Shane, sorry, okay, Alison gotcha. <laughs> and um, so we survey them at the beginning of every first year, so we have three years of that survey going. And then research question six, what are the experiences of students using Pebble across each of the four years in the OT program and what are the best ways to learn to use Pebble? That's going to be an honours research project coming up, a third year taking that on for um, next year, like this year into next year and it's, she's going to be researching her own cohort, cohort and they are the first cohort that will do the full four years. And then what are the experiences of staff using Pebble to track competencies within each course across the four years of the OT program? So that's, they're the research questions and as you can see there's lots of questions but they all work together and it's a kind of a flow, flow on effect. So our progress so far, so we got the grant at the end of last year and we pretty much started straight away. Um, we, at a curriculum retreat, we identified the threshold concepts essential for becoming an occupational therapist and we mapped the 105 competencies from the seven units of core competencies across the curriculum. And um, it's really good to have that as our background because that, that gave us a good foundation. Um, and then we started to look at how we use Pebble for, we, we continue to use Pebble for fieldwork reflection and journaling activities which we'd already had in place but now we're using Pebble much more widely in week to week teaching activities 
um, for example in workshops and tutorials because we want to map the um, competencies not just through field work so Wendy's description of having a, a practice educator signing off we're actually going to we're mapping it right through the entire curriculum so everything that happens inside the classroom as well because we realize a lot of that is where the, uh, the initial learning happens and we want students to see that we've mapped what we're teaching against the competencies because our vision is that when they graduate they know that they've met the competencies and that they're really confident about talking about them and and that really came through in yours too Wendy I was really pleased to hear that because that's a really that's a big strength so the students um you know this is a real this is really emerging so we're talking much more about the competencies and why they're important and how you can demonstrate that you've achieved them so the strategies that we've used to get all of this in place is firstly well, we use the curriculum retreat at the end of last year to map and that was huge um, oh that's good yeah awesome Wendy you're also going to be across the entire curriculum too and yeah new competencies are possibly coming in for OT Australia as well and I just really want this done before that happens so um, weekly face-to-face -face time with OT team members with our e-learning support person so Priscilla who's here and texting right now, texting in, in the chat space so she's our e-learning support for Pebble and so Fridays Priscilla spends two to three hours with the team each week and that's been the biggest difference between this year and last year. Um, we create how-to videos so Priscilla often makes those on the go so if it's a, an assignment has to be submitted using Pebble and the students are all looking um, very shaky she'll make a quick how-to video and embed it into Blackboard so the students can watch that and then see what they have to do and they commented today when we had a review meeting that the specific um, the really specific videos are specific to their course are very important um, the face-to-face -face training for students so first years we do two um, two face-to-face -face trainings the first one is really well attended the second one's hardly attended at all so that gives me information that either they um, they're busy or they got it so yeah it's not too bad uh, regular progress reports at team meetings so this is a standing agenda item on our discipline meeting so pebble is listed and so I'll give an update of what we're doing and where we're up to and check in with everybody and everyone it just isn't ever left um, off the out of the conversation and the all of these research questions that I listed to you were um, developed in collaboration with the team and the students and also I listed Priscilla and also the OT team on the research application the, the grant application so they're all members of that team which I think is important so a couple of examples of workbooks um, tutorials in OC 101 so a first year first semester course there's a, a week to week one you can see it says week one two three four five six seven and they headed off to field work after that and there's a different workbook for that and this one is a one-off workshop in OCS 311 and so I just ran this one where it was return to work or voc vocational rehab and so um, I just um, prepared that the day before and so when I was running the three-hour workshop the, the things that were up on the, the, um, the PowerPoint were paralleled in the workbook so I could say okay I want you guys now to just open you know Pebble okay go down to the third thing assessment approaches I want you to have a look at these different assessment approaches but ha do a reflection here and so they could just work um, on their devices that was a very um, enabled room because it actually has lots of computers and um, it's it's yeah it's uh, I can't even describe it it's a tiered learning space with tables that have um, interactive technology at each table so the students can readily access Pebble in class um, and that was great and then there's um, lots of um, yeah I'm trying to read the chat at the same time as present so um, and there's the third example that I wanted to mention was using um, Pebble for 
a critical appraisal review of each uh, student to student or peer review of critical appraisals. So um, what I'm now finding is my first years walk into class um, and they open up their for their tutorial workbook, they click onto Pebble, in they go through Blackboard, there's no extra sign on and they just get working and it's made a huge difference in terms of them not even questioning, yeah, gotcha, um, they don't even question that Pebble is used or not, it's just the way we do things. So by embedding it from year one and in this way and with loads of support, we've had tons, we've just had rapid uptake. So that's it. I can um, hand over for um, hand over for questions or discussion. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah, well done, Terry. I'll leave it with you. That's fantastic. <laughs> You know, what, I, what I've noticed or what I love about both presentations is that um, there is the design of what both scenarios, both well designed and looking at the longitudinal whole of course approach. Um, it's not just one particular uh, aspect of the course and um, it's obvious that both present presenters have designed and thought about this and taken on the whole team in this journey of adopting, which is, and both both points are, are intrinsically important in using ePortfolios in general. So, um, uh, thumbs up to both of you. Um, look, we only have five minutes left for questions. Um, were there any dying questions that needed um, needed to be addressed. Um, I think any questions here in the chat? Um, just just for me, um, just for me, Anita, uh, how many how many students are using this and how many staff? At the moment, um, probably about in OT, about six staff, and in and student-wise, about um, well, by the end of second semester, it will be 350 students will be in, and um, currently about a hundred uh, first years are using it just every week without question. Second years the same; there are about 65 of those. Third years, it's a little bit more haphazard, and they were the first group, and there's about 80 of them. So, and the fourth years will be in later. So, it's just getting there. Um, but what I love about it is, it, um, as Alison said, um, she said about normalising it is the key, and that's what we've found this year is normalising it has been the best thing. Yes, um, I love the fact that yeah, you're using it in classes, and workshops. It's not just used at oh, when I go on placement, I have to use that pebble pad thing. It's um, yeah. part and parcel and of their weekly engagement with technology. That's great. That's a great approach. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks, Alison. It was Priscilla. Sorry. <laughs> we also found that, um, that we were doing all of those reflections and so there was this mindset that exactly what you're saying, oh yeah that's right we have to put our reflection in Pebble at the end and you know how students just groan when you say about reflection. Um, they're not groaning so much and we've got um, way more buy-in because I think we're really scaffolding it a lot better and so it's not leaping to this thing, oh yeah now don't forget to do your reflection and put it in, like it's just not good enough to go from that that approach, um, and I think with the um, with the availability of um, tools like the new Pebble Pocket, that the, the, they can write their reflection um, then and there, then and there when they think about it, or in the workshop, or, or wherever when they're not connected to the internet, and uh, when they're ready, they can uh, upload those. So I think the future's quite bright in that regard. Yeah. Well, they're definitely coming to class with iPads and tablets and phones and that's the number one device that everyone has. Laptops would be definitely maybe, definitely maybe, I've got no stats, there you go, maybe about 
50% of students would have a laptop? Mm. I, I'd be um, I'd be very interested in hearing um, the uh, student feedback about this whole process. I, I know you're doing a little research, but but just to hear, well, what do they like about it? What do they dislike about it? How uh, how can we improve the processes for them? Because it sounds like your students are highly engaged in the process as well as the um, artifacts that they create. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that they're really pleased because we keep telling them that we're going to be coming back to this work in a few years' time and therefore it's stored in one place, they won't lose it. So they're very excited. Sure. They're like, oh, um, good, look, we won't put that notebook down. I, I don't wish to uh, discourage uh, con uh, extra con conversation. It's just that it's uh, approaching um, 2 o'clock now. Um, I'm more than happy to stay behind and keep talking. I love talking about this. Um, but, <laughs> Uh, for those who need to leave, um, we, one of the questions we do have on on our list is how do we, we obviously all find getting together like this or hearing about our case studies, our experiences, all these tips and tricks and um, ha the different ways to, to apply Pebble Pad. How can we continue these conversations? Um, what would you like to... Um, here uh, next in our in our any of these seminars, um, I'm sort of open to uh, hear from the group that are here. Um, the, the the discussion boards tend to be quite quiet, um, but we we all, all obviously uh, time poor. Um, uh, do we have any suggestions about where to next for us as a group? Um, oh, for those who obviously can't speak, up, if you could type in the chat. Um, what, what about uh, you, Anita, or, or Wendy? Uh, uh, what would you like to see out of this group? Um, is there somewhere, somewhere else we can go? Do we continue as we are now? Is that sufficient? Um, I th I, I'll just add something. I think um, just hearing what people are doing is really helping me get an idea of um, what's possible, um, how we're going, and then maybe who to connect with. Like seeing Wendy's work, I'm like, great. <laughs> I really like Wendy's work. I need to connect with Wendy. So that's really helpful. And um, yeah, I think that because we want to map people's um, competency attainments. So knowing how to do that and using reports and, and I loved how that was all laid out. So seeing how to do that and I suppose it's getting more technical from here as well. Mm. And, and um, I think you're right, just knowing who's doing what. For instance, I suppose if I was really interested in what you were doing, Anita, uh, on a more detailed scale, I would probably contact you directly. So I suppose it's that sort of um, uh, networking with people that we hadn't met before. Um, this forum gives that opportunity. Um, and I am conscious of everyone being very busy. Um, um, Terry, so can I just um, can I just say something? Sure. Um, just, I was just thinking, you know, at the moment, this is only the second one of these groups that we've had and um, we're only looking at sort of once every two months. I would imagine for, you know, at least the next little while, having a few more of these sessions would be good because I think there are lots of, there's still lots of people doing lots of really good things that we haven't heard from and doing things that are slightly different. But perhaps after we've done sort of three or four of them, then we might need to start having a slightly different focus, you know, getting perhaps a bit more technical or throwing some technical stuff in the mix with more case study type things. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. I think um, these initial ones have been, for me, have been about, oh, that's great what, what uh, Anita's doing over there. Oh, that's interesting that Wendy's doing that. And I've taken lots of little notes to prompt me um, and um, I think you're right, I think that's the approach we can continue to have um, until we decide to take it in another direction or hear from the group.
Yeah, obviously we're always, you know, welcome any suggestions people have or if anybody would like to, you know, volunteer or, or volunteer somebody. <laughs> if you know someone's doing some great things, let us know and we'll chase them to do a presentation. That's right. And it doesn't have to be um, uh, hugely comprehensive if it's, if it's really about sharing what we're doing. And I, I suppose... I suppose for me, or even for others, it might be a case of I've got this problem, uh, I've done it this way. Is any, does anyone out there, and there's a lot of knowledgeable people here in the group, can you give me another way to look at this or maybe um, uh, do it better? Because there's many ways to use PebblePad. That could be an approach too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right then, I suppose. Um, All right. Um, 